Johnson to flex muscle as Brexit goes to next round. The trouble with paying too much attention to social media is that one risks becoming brainwashed with the drivel that passes for discourse on many social media channels. Much of what we observed over recent weeks on social media, and indeed in liberal media outlets, in general suggested that Boris Johnson was unelectable and that the grand old warrior Jeremy Corbyn would come to the rescue of the UK. This analysis seemed to ignore the fact that Johnson was twice elected mayor in a Labour city and that Corbyn's ideological leanings have a long history of failure in many countries over many decades. Last Friday morning, it brought a smile to many faces to observe the reaction of outrage from the very liberal politically correct liberal media. They cannot claim that Johnson's victory is a fluke or that it is down to nefarious activities. He won fair and square and now has a commanding majority of 80 seats in the British Parliament, which will inevitably give him an obnoxious swagger and a belief that he now walks on water. However, the real work is only beginning and he will have his work cut out over the next couple of years in taking the UK out of the EU in as least damaging fashion as possible, and in appeasing all of the traditional Labour voters around the country who could never possibly have imagined in their wildest dreams casting a vote for the Tory party. The fun is only now beginning. Johnson is no longer leading a minority government subject to the whims of others with dubious aims and can now proceed full steam ahead with his agenda. Unfortunately, it is still not entirely clear what that agenda is. There is now a strong sense of wonder about what the real Boris Johnson will look like when he eventually does stand up. One thing we do know is that a second referendum is now completely gone off the agenda, and those who believe that Brexit would never happen will be left sorely disappointed. His election slogan Get Brexit Done is really all we can go on at this stage, and he was quite happy to repeat the slogan to a chorus of approval in the House of Commons on Wednesday. Now he will begin the process of getting his withdrawal agreement through Parliament. Parliament, and this should not prove a problem, given his majority. Somewhat bizarrely, the withdrawal bill will include legislation to prevent the transition period from being extended beyond December 31, 2020. As it stands today, the UK will leave the EU on January 31. At that stage, negotiations with the EU will begin on a future trading relationship. The balance of advantage in terms of trade negotiation skills will be very firmly on the EU side because it is used to negotiating free trade deals. The UK side has absolutely no experience and presumably very few skills in that regard. Mindful of where the strength lies in the relationship, for more on this story, visit the news article link.